Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Where are you at on planet Earth? Oh, I'm in Charlottesville. Charlottesville. Okay. Yes, the famous place that got tarred three years ago. Uh, but it's the opposite. A lot of people think Charlottesville is full of Nazis. It's the complete opposite. They came here because uh, it's a very liberal and fine town. So I'm going to hold town. you to that there. Yeah, because okay. I got to bring her on. Okay, so hang tight. You're right back. Good morning and welcome to the original Loretta Brown show, radio to open the heart, heal the soul, and awaken the consciousness. And I always give a shout out to my amazing producer, Benny Mathers, because Benny, I wouldn't be here without you. Aww, you know? Thanks. Appreciate it. Well, we do what we can, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. We were talking a little bit about before the show about how how many people are actually coming into the radio station, which is not many, right? And uh, I miss it. I say it every week, but I do. I miss well, it. Yeah, it's we miss everybody beautiful. too. But you know, we're just doing our thing, staying safe, playing playing the cards right, uh, and right. Uh, making it making the best out of it. That is right. That's yeah. right. And life goes on. There's a song about that, I think. Anyway, beautiful here in Seattle. I hope it's beautiful wherever it is that all of you are listening to. Uh, I am the owner of Reiki Oasis, located right here in the greater Seattle area for the last, goodness, since 1995. I don't even know how long ago that is, 20 some years ago. Anyway, um, lots of good things going on. I am doing uh, my, session, my sessions through Zoom and Skype, FaceTime, phone, and um, yeah. Things are still happening. We're still around and it's good. This coming weekend, Saturday, August 15th, I have my monthly class with women. It is through Zoom format. We're having a great time. And this class is called Temple of the Divine Feminine. And I hope you can join us. Anybody can come, especially because now we're on Zoom. It doesn't matter if you're in the Seattle area. You can sign up for everything at schedule.reikioasis.com. And, um, you know, if you have questions about stuff, you can always send me a, an email. You can send it to info at ReikiOasis.com and, and you can always give me a little call, get on my social media pages, send me a, a PM or whatever it is if you need more information. Every Sunday at 11 a.m., I offer Sunday meditation with Loretta. And it's just really an opportunity for you to... Uh, come and kind of get yourself reorganized or centered or I don't know you know we have all kinds of different types of meditations and sometimes we go places this past weekend we had a wonderful lion's gate portal meditation I got really good feedback from people on that so I hope you'll join us Sundays at 11 a.m. that's Pacific Standard Time because I'm in the greater Seattle area I want to thank all my patrons. I am a listener-supported show. Wow. And as you all know, we're live on, you know, KKNW, 1150 AM. And we're also on an FM channel. And we're live streaming and all kinds of stuff. And it's not free. And I so appreciate any dollar, any amount. And I also appreciate prayers and good thoughts and and good energy because I believe in that also. You know, what we send out comes back to us at some level and in some way. So if you want to be part of that, you can go to patreon.com slash the Loretta Brown Show and become a patron. I want to give a quick check-in with astrology before I bring on my amazing guest, who I'm very much looking forward to. But today, August 13th, Mars squares. Pluto. And pay attention to today. It's going to be laying some groundwork for the months to come. Mars is a very active player in the sky from September to the end of the year, and it is about to go retrograde, which means we'll be vi revisiting the events that are going on now. We will be revisiting them again before the year is over, and if I forgot to mention it, Mars and Aries are running around together right now. And sometimes that's just a little bit of a volatile energy. 
I want to remind you that even though I give you a, what I call an astrology energy forecast, it's like the weather forecast. It's just a little heads up. Like if you look out the window and it's raining, well, you might not want to wear, you know, your, your flip flops and your shorts. You might want to take something for the rain. We're greater than the stars, but it is a good idea to take a look at the forecast on Saturday, the day after tomorrow, August 15th. Uranus, the planet of awakening, change, and liberation will go retrograde until January of 2021. And Uranus will guide us to address the things that are crumbling in our lives, in our planet, globally, politically, personally, either by helping us to let go or by helping us to gain a new perspective so we can strengthen them or redo them. Like I said, it's about awakening, change, and liberation. So Uranus can be the planet of revolutionary thought. <laughs> well, good, good day for my guest to be here. And can connect us deeper to our higher guidance, God, guides, angels, whatever your, your, uh, whatever your flavor is out there. So we can live life from a higher perspective, which in my opinion, changes everything. You may have dreams or visions of past experiences or incarnations, or you may be guided to remember lost knowledge or wisdom from the world around us. You maybe, maybe you're going to bring something in that will really help us in this time of change. Uranus will be retrograde, by the way, through the sign of Taurus, which means that we may feel a push-pull between embracing the new and letting go of the old. And Uranus will be in Taurus until 2026. So we're going to be working on these themes for quite some time. Um, when things are retrograde, I just want to remind you that is not the end of the world. That is a revisiting and an opportunity to possibly look at things differently or do them differently. And then coming up this next week, Tuesday, we have a new moon in Leo. We just went through the Lionscape portal, which is a yearly portal, and it's a high frequency energy. It just shines the light on things. And many of you have been complaining that you've been really tired and really fatigued this week. And this often happens when we're going through some kind of a change, right? I know there's a lot of stress out there because that's a lot of the work that I do with people is kind of helping you come back into the light or, or stabilize yourself in some manner. But remember that we are going through change and this new moon in Leo is bold, it is brave, it is big hearted, and it is giving us supportive energy to possibly take a leap of faith and see how we can make the most of wherever we are currently finding ourselves. So if you, I think that's a wonderful segue to bring my guest on. And if there was ever a time on planet earth for us to be talking about miracles or things that are maybe even beyond our understanding, this would definitely be the time. So if you've ever been fa fascinated by or even personally experienced extraordinary events that we often call miracles. You're going to really enjoy my show. My guest today is Dr. Michael Grosso, PhD. He's an artist, philosopher, professor, teacher. He's an author of many books to include Smile of the Universe, Miracles in an Age of Disbelief. Michael has a PhD in philosophy and an MA in classical Greek, and has taught humanities and philosophy at a number of institutions. He's also participated in the work of the University of Virginia's Division of Perceptual Studies, and he's the director of the American Philosophical Practitioners Association. He conducts wisdom seminars, I love that, discussion groups that apply philosophy, philosophy to problems of everyday life. I love this subject of miracles. I'm so glad you're on the show, Dr. Grosso. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you very much, Loretta. I'm, I'm happy to be here and look forward to chatting with you. Very much so. 
Um, so I'm just going to start out. What is a miracle? Okay, that's a, <laughs> yeah, that's a, good, that's a good question. Look, uh, it, it, I think it's uh, the term is used broadly to, uh, you know, excuse me, I'm going to put this down for the speaker. I'm getting a little buzz. I want to see if this works with the speaker. Okay. Can you hear me? I yeah, we still got you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, I, I, uh, the, I use the word miracle in two senses. One, it has the sense of uh, smile. If you look at the root uh, of the word miracle, it's rooted in, in a word uh, SMI, where we get our word smile. So that's the rhetorical. So anything that sort of astonishes us and is, and uh, induces a sense of wonder. That's the first characteristic. But for me, the crucial characteristic is that a miracle is something uh, that current science cannot explain, in particular, current materialist science. So uh, I, my use of the term then really takes in quite a bit of territory. Uh, the other thing is uh, I'd like to say about how I'm using the term miracle it often implies something um, for many people, and I don't object to this, that it implies an, in, an intervention from God, and I don't know that, okay? All I know are the stories that, of people that uh, indicate they have experienced something that is entirely uh, wonderful and baffling. Uh, but as to the origins, I leave that uh, to listeners and to others, I don't know the answer to that great question, and I'm humbly admitting that fact, but I'm unhumbly insisting upon the reality of all kinds of strange phenomena that we can't explain. Um, I love that, and I, I wanted to start with that question because, you know, we can say things like, oh my goodness, that person's in love with me, it's a miracle, all the way to, oh my goodness, I think that there's uh, tears coming out of that statue, right? You know? Right. Yeah. So it's kind of a broad term, uh, the, the idea it, of it miracles. It is a broad term, but uh, mm -hmm. because I don't want to leave things out. But on the other hand, in the back of my mind is a very clear sense that there's something here that is challenging Mm -hmm. current science. Uh, and that's the part that I want to insist upon. And that's why, I mean, you just mentioned the statues that, um, that bleed and weep. It's entirely unknown to most people that, particularly from the 1990s on, all over the world, there have been epidemics in religious countries, of course, that have statues or that are, have religious connotations. Uh, but th we're seeing this all over the place uh, in the United States, uh, in, in, in Russia, and various parts of Europe, Africa. Uh, it's something that mainstream science doesn't even want to think about because it's on the face of it so completely strange and absurd. But I myself uh, begin my book with my own experience in a story in New York uh, some years ago, uh, where there was a statue that was weeping, and it was in the newspaper and on on television, and I went there and I witnessed it with a colleague. So I could see uh, that this statue uh, was around the eyes of statue of St. Irene in a Greek Orthodox church uh, had been uh, pouring out tears, and I saw, I don't know, whether, at first I didn't know whether they were tears or not. They were liquid that looked like tears. Later on, they were studied and analyzed by scientists, and it was determined that they were, in fact, similar to human tears. Now, how do tears come out of a, you know, a statue is, uh, is a complete mystery, and a beautiful mystery. That. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, so anyway, those are my, my, my thoughts about that. I, I love, um, I loved your book, by the way. It's really, uh, fascinating to read and, and because you've got such a, a scholarly approach to it, it it's 
it's really quite wonderful as well as you bring all the stories out for us to read and think about. But yeah, starting with that story where you actually go to that statue of, I think you said St. Irene because I you caught my interest right away. Um, uh -huh. You know, I think that we have within ourselves uh, sometimes a natural skepticism. Like, is mm. this a hoax? Like, is this real? And, and mm -hmm. I've even had, you know, because I've had experiences where I've seen things and then it's like, I'm going, am I really seeing this? Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, yes. I mean, uh, we're, you know, we should be skeptical about things that completely depart from our habitual experience, but not so skeptical as to close things out, uh, you know, too, you know, we, too, too rigidly. Uh, skeptical, but careful in terms of seeing how how much the skepticism really holds up and how much we need to admit that there's something going on we don't understand yeah and i also am uh, i was listening to what you said you know mainstream media has kind of a, a science you know is is like has a hard time really approaching this whereas like when you have these things like um uh, our lady of fatima which uh, I was glad you mentioned her. I've been having an experience with her, which is kind of interesting. And oh, wow. I've never been to Portugal and, and I'm not Catholic. And it's just mm -hmm. one of those things that happens to people. Um, but where, where lots and lots of people will come to that area, right? So we have these kind of an extreme, right? right. And yeah. I mean, there's the basis for that. I mean, historically, uh, there's a, first of all, the influence of science uh, has been very powerful on modern culture and modern science is physical science. We scientists know how to, uh, and have learned how to understand and manipulate physical reality to an amazing degree. And so it's difficult to, um, uh, for some people who think that science is confined to that range of topics to accept the reality of uh, something that doesn't quite fit into the materialist paradigm. But that's a mistake that we have to resist because uh, there are more things in heaven and earth, as Hamlet says, than are dreamt <laughs> of in the, in, the, in the philosophy of contemporary materialism. So let's wake up and, uh, and see what these things mean and uh, and explore them but you're right there is a, a a bias an academic bias and the press the mainstream press which i admire profoundly uh and for many reasons but they do tend to go along with what they view as established science and it's difficult to get a um a hearing uh from the mainstream uh consciousness we we'll put it that way but it is, uh, it's, a, it's a battle, uh, or let's say uh, a gentle, nonviolent war <laughs> that's going on as we speak. And you're, you're in the, uh, you're part of it because mm -hmm. you're uh, allowing me to talk about these things to uh, uh, a public. Uh, and uh, that, that, that's great. So it, it, things are changing. And I do believe that uh, uh, there is a, a, a growing movement around the world, a, a new consciousness emerging in various places, including, by the way, many academics. I know a few of them <laughs> myself. But, uh, I, I love what you just said. I was actually going to ask you if you think that, and I, I don't even know if you can answer this question, it's like, are, are we seeing more miracles than than we have? Is it are we reporting more of them? Are we just becoming more conscious? How would you respond to that question? Uh, it's a good yeah. question. I, I, of course, I don't know. I mean, we don't know what's going on mm -hmm. in the bulk of the world, right? I mean, in poor countries, uh, uh, lesser, uh, more less advanced countries that are still operating very often with spiritualistic beliefs and practices, we have no idea what's going on there. So, uh, but there are, there is evidence, as I pointed out, uh, if you look on the internet for bleeding statues and, uh, and, 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 uh, and paintings, 
uh, bleeding and weeping, uh, at least the last time I looked, which was a while ago, uh, you'll see all kinds, especially in the 1990s, I found and incorporated some of that material into my book because I was so shocked. I mean, I knew that uh, stories of uh, bleeding uh, statues and weeping statues go back to the 12th century. I mean, I mentioned some of them, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but they seem to be on the increase today. It could be there's more people and more ways of communicating. But there's no doubt, to my mind, that there is, uh, I would call it, the, an epidemic of uh, at least, uh, I'm talking right, right now about these uh, bleeding object types of phenomena. And uh, I, I find them completely, I mean, it, it's so shockingly strange to think that an inanimate thing can produce a tear or, or blood. Uh, and, of course, not just an inanimate thing. It is a statue representing an idea. Mm -hmm. so let me throw in the, uh, the notion that the miracles tend to happen and transpire around symbols of exceptional power. So you need mm -hmm. some kind of contact mm -hmm. with okay. an, an element that has a connection and a kind of authoritative source of the miraculous before they take place. And that often uh, involves a, a statue or a ritual or perhaps a piece of music uh, or an apparition that a child has uh, can often, as in many cases of Marian visions, set in motion a series of experiences that involve miracles. So there's a process that goes on here. And uh, it it's, um, does seem to be on the increase uh, today. Um, wow, you said so much in there, um, Dr. Grosso. I mean, you really did. I, I'm thinking of 10 questions, so I'll, I'll try to okay. pull them out because I'm that girl, you know, I'm that curious girl. And okay. um, I, I just kind of want to point out that, you know, when we talk about miracles, and maybe I'll just ask this as a question, do we need to be religious? Do we need to have been doing some kind of a special, you know, like fasting and meditating? Or what are your findings regarding that? Well, that's a good question. I think the, the answer is uh, both. In other words, okay. many miracles, so-called miracles, extraordinary phenomena, occur in the context of belief and expectation, ritual, uh, psychophysical practices like fasting uh, and prayer, uh, and very often they do result in extraordinary uh, events. But just as often, it would have, maybe not just as often, I don't have the number, frankly, but I do know that there are cases of individuals uh, who uh, have no religious sentiments at all, aren't thinking of anything religious, and these extraordinary things happen. Uh, like I remember being, I'll give one example, a, a, a man, because I've written a book on, on levitation, which is another interesting phenomenon. And a man uh, uh, told me a story of uh, how he fell off a boat, uh, a motorboat, and uh, accidentally, obviously. And as he was falling, there were other people on the boat and watched him fall. Somehow his, his body was slowed up long enough as he was falling. In other words, the gravity shifted. Instead of plunging directly into the water, which probably would have killed him and he would have been swept over by that boat, Yeah. It, his body slowed up in space and he was able to reach out and grab a rope and save himself. And everyone on that boat witnessed it. And uh, so and this is in ordinary life. Right. The eruptions yeah. of the impossible and the strange do take place. And I only knew that story because he heard me on the radio and then got in touch with me. I would have never heard of it. So um, the answer is, it seems to be democratically open, whatever the source of these extraordinary phenomena. Uh, and it's not so ideologically or religiously tied down as one might suspect. Well, and it crosses cultures and religions and 
ages and <laughs> exactly. exactly right and, yeah and it, and it, in so doing i believe it reflects a universal spirit i have nothing against separate religions because different religions different people have different experiences of the one great universal mind that i happen to believe is at the bottom of all this so yeah. there are different traditions, different periods of history. But when you look closely at the history of spirituality, I think it's obvious, at least to me, that there's one source behind it all. Mm -hmm. And different ways of interpreting different names uh, that are devised by different cultures to describe their experiences. And that's perfectly all right. And mm -hmm. I think... I hope we're moving toward a more ecumenical uh, view of human spirituality. Uh, and, uh, and I think that there is a tendency in that direction. The, the, the great leaders of spirituality uh, have always been, or mostly I would think, again, I'm not absolutely certain, uh, open to the ecumenical spirit. But mm -hmm. above all, in these days, in modern times, we really need to emphasize the universality of these phenomena so as to what hopefully increase uh the sense of oneness of uh of the human race we sure could use that nowadays right <laughs> we certainly could uh <laughs> we absolutely could and and i i quite often say to people because they'll ask me all kinds of things and you you know i was i was raised in the in the christian church and you know your heart can never go too far away from your basic mm -hmm. teachings but i believe there is one there's just one being one god one one something call it call it mm -hmm. the great photon i don't care but everything's mm -hmm. coming from that one and i i do agree with you i think we can find some sort of place in there i have sometimes wondered if um you know miracles um be they big or be they small, you know, I've always wondered, is that just that, that consciousness trying to say, hey, I'm here, and could you mm -hmm. come this way, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. Right, right, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, I, I sometimes also believe there's an element of uh, randomness and accidentalness in it all. In other words, whatever enables us to be receptive, it could be physiological, it could be the state of the brain. We know when our normal brain function is upset by one thing or another, it could be a drug, it could be illness, it could be a loss of oxygen and as in a near death experience. But we know that during those states of breakdown of the physical organism, there's a greater likelihood of breakthrough mm. of some spiritual force element, some form of consciousness that was merely latent and needed an opening before it could announce itself and uh, and do its thing. So, uh, but so I sense sometimes that you know there's no big divine plan directing it. Uh, it's nice to think that, but frankly. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. It does mean mm -hmm. that uh, mm -hmm. it's uh, an obscure and mysterious process, to put it that way. Yeah, you say something there uh, at the point of breakdown is breakthrough. And boy, that's something that I, I want to address. Um, we're going to take a station break in just a minute. Before we do, while you were talking, I was thinking, I've had many incidents in my life where I've had what I call miraculous saving of my life or some uh -huh. weird thing right i've had uh, three sure. near three near uh near death experiences and things like that but this is very small and very short i can share it with you in the audience i was very young i might have been 18 or 19 driving in a car with my brother and we were on the old country roads where you have just two lanes you know and it's hilly right, right? and we're trying uh -huh. to pass this big truck and as it is, you know, you pull over and you think the road's clear, but you don't realize there's a dip in the road. And mm. so I was right next to, I was driving, I was right next to this great big huge truck. And all of a sudden there was a car right in front of us that had come up out of a dip. And uh. both of us just, it was, you know how things happen so fast? And I went, mm -hmm. oh, oh no. And I simply closed my eyes because I was like, we're going to uh. hit 
right? It's going to hit uh -huh. us. And I closed my eyes and nothing happened. And I opened uh -huh. my eyes and our car somehow had been transported and we were in front of the truck. And my brother opened his eyes at the same time I did. And we both said, what just happened, right? Uh, so wow. yeah, I know pretty amazing uh, stuff. I know I love this that, stuff. That is, yeah, yeah, That's really. A uh, uh, strange things happen on the road, but I, I'll let you take your break, and I'll tell you if you want a little incident I, of mine. Some, I some would. I, yours. I'd love to hear it. Okay, so this is Loretta Brown, my guest today, Dr. Michael Michael Grosso, PhD. We're talking about his book, Smile of the Universe miracles in an age of disbelief and don't go away because when we come back we're going to talk about some really important miracles cool i'll clear you too all right thank you mm -hmm. uh, yeah <laughs> what a great conversation oh, i'm enjoying it very much and, yeah uh, me I, too. and we share this uh, we share an interest in healing yes uh, yes we I'm, do uh, you know, strong students of the power of uh, the healing power of, of the mm. spirit. And uh, uh, so that's great. Uh, I love that. In, in, in what way, by the way, I mean, I'm fascinated. You are, I mean, really, I, I honestly mean this. I, I read your book and then I was looking at oh, some of the other books that you wrote. You know, I'm one of these girls that was raised by a, a, a father who read all this philosophical stuff and we would go <laughs> we would go car shopping on Sundays after going to church with mom we'd go car shopping and we'd talk about things and he'd say don't tell your mother what we're talking about <laughs> but I think he really awakened in me this curiosity of like what is this what is going on yeah yeah well yeah. it's great to have a father that uh Oh, he read all the Edgar Casey stuff, and I still sleep uh -huh. with books under my pillow, right? Thinking when I wake uh -huh. up in the morning, I'll have absorbed them, right? Right. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. fun stuff. Anyway, t catch your breath, and Benny will bring us back on in yeah, just a minute. Yeah, we're about 10 seconds out, so hang tight. KNW.com. KKNW. Talk variety that's live and local. Alternative Talk 1150. Here to uplift. Thank you, Benny. I love that. Smile. Yeah, definitely a song of smiling. This is Loretta Brown, owner of Reiki Oasis, located right here in the greater Seattle area. My guest today, the amazing Dr. Michael Grosso, PhD, author of many books. You'll want to check him out. And we're talking about his book, Smile of the Universe, Miracles in an Age of Disbelief. And... Um, Dr. Grosso, just before the break, I told a little story, and you said you had a little story to tell. Yeah, we'd love not, to hear it. it. It doesn't quite qualify as a miracle, I think, but it was strange in terms of. But I was driving with a, a student. She was giving me a lift someplace, uh, and we hit an embankment, and the um, the car started went into a spin against the oncoming traffic. So I thought to myself, this is it. And I sort of, I didn't close my eyes as you closed your eyes. Uh, I, um, I, I went into a trance in which I suddenly felt wonderful. I felt like just, it, it was an unusually beautiful sensation, uh, almost a mystical sense of, uh, of, of happiness and completely had no fear. And by chance, fortunately, and I'm here to tell the story, uh, no car hit us. We, we were able to, we got across the traffic oh. before the oncoming traffic. Uh, yeah. And, uh, but for that moment, when I was actually consciously facing my imminent extinction, I felt happy 
and I entered into an altered state of consciousness. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that says something. Yeah, that I suppose it relates to the general, more drastic near-death, you know, experiences that we hear a lot about. But uh, I never forgot that experience. It it it, it, it kind of uh, arms me against the idea of death that there's somehow some part of us or aspect is familiar with it and isn't afraid. Uh, and uh, anyway, that's just this my little story. Not quite a miracle, uh, but I, I, I actually think it was a miracle. I, 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 mm, like I don't know how to interpret it. Sort of like you, like we observe these things, and but when mm -hmm. something catches your attention like that, I always think we're aware of that. There's something there, right? You know, that's unusual. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's unusual. Maybe you passed through a. Uh, a portal to the reality where you did not get hurt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. I mean, you know, these yeah. these things, you know, people talk about quantum jumping and parallel realities and mm -hmm. that that the euphoric feeling, you know, I think ties right. into something. Yeah. Yeah, that was the word I was looking for before, euphoria. And mm -hmm. you don't feel euphoric when you're facing death. <laughs> not normally, I don't think. <laughs> So maybe that is a miracle, right? <laughs> Unless you're in now times going, yes, I'm out of here. But, you know, don't, right. don't do that, listeners. Don't do that. You know, just just right, make, it, right. make it a joke. Um, I would like to talk about some, some important uh, or miracles that are important to you. And, um, you know, you have everything in your book. You've got levitation. You've got... You know, I said, uh, uh, Fatima, you know, you've got the Hindu milk miracles, you've got bilocations, st stigmatas, tulpas, um, tokens of espousal, you've got all kinds of stuff in your book. Right. <laughs> Could right. you please <laughs> mention maybe some of your favorite ones? Well, yeah, there are, uh, it, you know, one is enough to sort of shake up your sense of reality. I mean, mm -hmm. My, my research into miracles is really, it's about research into the nature of reality that we don't yet understand. And so I'm, I tend to be attracted to the most spectacular and shocking phenomena mm -hmm. only, only I emphasize, if there is not just passingly good evidence, but very strong evidence. So for example, you mentioned this uh, uh, a miracle uh, back in the uh, I think it was 1995 in in the 90s about the milk the so-called milk miracle. What happened there on that one day? This is a, a miracle that took place in uh, mosques, not mosques, uh, temples, uh, Hindu temples all over the world that had statues of the uh, elephant-headed god Ganesha. Uh, removal yeah. of obstacles. So one day a guy wakes up and rather has a dream that Ganesh says, bring me milk. So he goes, he wakes up and he brings some milk to a statue, he puts the milk, but the milk disappears. Everyone, the people start to notice that. And before you know it, it's happening all over the world uh, in similar types of situations. Now, turned out that I turned on CNN that day and I watched a British reporter perform an experiment. He held a cup of milk in front of the statue of Ganesha and the camera zeroes in on this little cup and you can see the milk go down oh. slowly and then disappear. Okay. So I'm thinking, holy smoke. It turns out that this happened all over the world where there were statues. Later, I had two students, two Indian students of mine, who reported to me that they witnessed this phenomenon. And one of them was smart enough to go online. He told me three times to convince himself of the reality. And every time that he brought milk up, the same thing happened. It disappeared. So he wrote up a detailed report for me. So oh, wow. I saw this mi miracle. I saw it myself on television. Hot stuff, right? Yeah. And I had I had students who came to me uh, who were present and uh, and witnessed this phenomenon. 
So I think this is such a shocking thing. Uh, It's shocking in the same way that materialization is shocking. Because, I mean, it's as though it it clearly suggests that there is some other dimension of reality that we're engrossed in or entangled with that has to explain the disappearances and the, and the appearances, materializations of whether it be uh, food or, or blood uh, uh, for a statue or, 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 or tears or whatever. So these things are so completely contrary to our normal understanding of the world. They say to me that science and philosophy and common sense is way behind mm-hmm. the actual reality of the world. Uh, and, there, and so as a curious philosopher with an interest in science and an interest in spirituality, I'm, I, I'm pushing in this direction. I want to understand what these extraordinary and strange phenomena uh, mean. And uh, so those are some examples. of. Uh, I'll mention one, another set of phenomena that I find so wonderfully interesting, namely the recorded visions of, of uh, the Virgin Mary, which have been taking place at least since the 11th century in England. But I was especially impressed, uh, I wasn't around there back in 1917, <laughs> in, in, in Fatima in 1917, a, a couple of children claimed to see the Virgin Mary. No one saw that except the children. But the children predict what were told that six months that they would come every month to the same scene and the virgin would return. And that happened. But she predicted that on the sixth occasion, there would be something that everybody would witness and know that this was a real phenomenon. Everyone would see it, not just the three kids. And sure enough, on that last day, I think it was in October, the World Series were going on in the United States. On that day, a, uh, a series uh, of events took place that were witnessed by 70,000 witnesses that had arrived that day. And what it was, it's a so-called miracle of the sun. The sun did not move or jump around in the sky, of course. But the impression that people had was that the sun uh, went, started to spin and then plunged down toward the earth. And uh, there are photographs of people watching this. It apparently resulted in a, a drying up of the, it had been raining. And everybody saw it, including the skeptics who were there all set to, to try <laughs> to deprive these children of the authenticity of their prediction. But they were correct. Something did happen that 70,000 people witnessed. And incidentally, uh, UFO or observe, observers of unknown phenomena that appear in the sky have noticed, noticed immediately, uh, or eventually I should say, that it looked like a typical UFO sighting because oh. UFOs move around in zigzag motion. Uh-huh. And so whatever it was that, that caused the, the appearance of the sun to change moved down toward the earth in a classic zigzag motion found in the, in the UFO phenomenon and then went back up and got absorbed into the sun and disappeared. So uh, there are some uh, researchers who suspect that some of these Marian visions may be engineered by uh, beings uh, of a extraterrestrial or higher order reality, and we don't know who they are, where they're coming from, and why they should be aware and interested in our religious life. But uh, any, at any rate, that was one of the most mysterious events that I've ever heard about. And why it impresses me so much, uh, uh, Loretta, is the fact that you have 70,000 witnesses. Oh, wow. Right? It's something that is totally impossible and incredible. Uh, so these are my favorites, and I, I could go on giving other examples. Oh, but, uh, I, 
I, I have to tell you, I am thrilled with what you're telling me. I love this stuff too. And by the way, I am like, yeah, I want to hear about all the amazing miracles. I want to hear about people's small miracles, but I love this. I love this, uh, your rendition of uh, the Lady of Fatima. And I also had heard this uh, possible UFO connection of some kind. Um, but yeah, 70,000 witnesses, a little hard to... Um, uh, wash that one away, isn't it? <laughs> exactly, exactly. And here, here's another reason why I'm oh. fascinated by the, by the Marian visions. The figure of Mary is the only, I may be overstating this, but a religious figure to appear on a regular basis to large numbers of people Mm -hmm. and blow their minds and mm -hmm. and uh I, I and i feel that that is important from the point of view of what's happening in uh in our culture that the mm -hmm. that women are gradually and finally uh beginning are uh, being recognized for their humanity more fully uh, with the movements that are taking place today and i think that the sign of the feminine power uh is um very interesting uh so i try to connect the 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 marian phenomenon the totality of it it's very complicated and there are many aspects of it to the how should we put it uh the more full realization and uh assertion of the feminine principle uh, in the divine order, so to speak, uh, and I think that's that 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 social connection with women mm -hmm. is, is interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, uh, see, otherwise, in the Abrahamic religions, uh, there are not there are all all the deities are male. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Not in the Hindu uh, uh, traditions and mm -hmm. other traditions, but in the Abrahamic traditions, God is only a man. <laughs> that doesn't sound right to me. <laughs> I, I, of course, love what you just said. I, I agree with that totally. And um, yeah, the, the, the Marian visions, they do come to a lot of people and quite often will be in different locations like at, at Lourdes, you know, in, in mm -hmm. France and, and um, uh, 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 Lady of Guadalupe and, and you know, mm -hmm. the, these sorts of things. Um, just because I alluded to it earlier in the show, I'm just gonna briefly tell people, I am having, I truly am having some kind of a personal experience with Our Lady of Fatima, who started to appear to me, you know, I'm a, a clairvoyant and, and kind of an odd girl. And she woke me up in the middle of the night a couple of months ago and told me to start praying for the country and the world. So, wow. um, so I did, so I am, right? Well, and, wow, yeah. wow, okay. Yeah, that, she's, that's, a, that, that, that's an interesting coincidence that we're doing this <laughs> report. And, and I know. Be one of my favorite uh, <laughs> uh, miracle phenomena. Yeah, really. well, I, I had to look it up and I watched a couple of shows on it and I, I really was just, it, it's really from my heart, so I just share it with everybody that, you know, anybody can light a candle and send some good prayers and good energy and whatever it is you do, it, I, I'm not going to prescribe that, right? But, but just, mm -hmm. you know, bring some attention to uh, bringing peace to the world or, or helping us move forward in our consciousness, right? right. Yeah. <laughs> So that's my little ser sermon for the day right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, in, I'm, I'm very impressed because that basically that's what the lady has been doing all along. Mm -hmm. What she did to you, I mean, your visitation and the instruction basically is the same message that she's constantly making, yeah. uh, you know, to turn over a new lease, as, as it were, and uh, uh, wake up. To the uh, to to our humanity and, and our spirituality, uh, but uh, it, it's so interesting to see that that is one of the few explicitly feminine. I mean, even though in the history of miracles, uh, there are countless stories of uh, uh, women involved in uh, uh, all kinds of uh, apparitions. Uh, in Edia, for example, many uh, female 
spir highly spiritual people of the, the female sex uh, have uh, been known for their prolonged inedia, mm -hmm. uh, their their ability to live uh, not just for days, but for years and mo months and years without eating or uh, ingesting anything. Wow! Uh, yeah. So that that's that that's another type of biological miracle that fascinates me. Uh, well, and that ties uh, into uh, miraculous healings, right? Uh huh. Oh, and, yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and there again, you see, you have uh, what I like to say about miraculous healings. There are lots of stories, well documented stories that that I cover in my book. But the thing that is most common that we can all recognize that science itself has to acknowledge is the phenomenon of the placebo. This is, you know, used in, in medical research all of the time. For example, in studying the value and the utility of drugs that are supposed to help people who are depressed, they will use a placebo. So they give a, they give a, a group of people, one group of people, the, the drug that's supposed to help with their depression, and they give another group, you know, a shot of water. <laughs> the placebo is not <laughs> actively help, helping them. Right, it yeah. Turns it turns out that the placebo is almost just a matter of a tiny one or two degrees different, but less effective than the actual medicine. So in other words, almost the same number of people experience a release from their depression just because they believed something and yes. not because they were given anything. That tells us about something about the power of belief. And the interesting thing about the placebo, and I haven't really made a profound study of this, but I've read a fair bit. My impression is that the placebo, the belief element, seems to affect every kind of medical condition you can possibly imagine. Wow. It's the sheer fact of the mind expecting, believing, um, being psyched up uh, that they are going to be improved or healed or helped by such and such a thing does the trick. And so if that's not evidence of the power of the mind and the power of the spirit, I don't know what is. Well, you know, we're, we're down to just a, a couple of minutes left in the show. And I, I'm so mm -hmm. sorry, we're not going to be able to totally explore that because that to me raises all kinds of questions around like, I really wanted to talk about levitation, right? <laughs> Dematerialization yeah, yeah. and, and how, how, you know, are we headed towards some sort of uh, um, uh, opening of our consciousness? You know, I mean, these are sort of random events. We can't really make them happen. But what I mm -hmm. really want to ask you, like the last question, because we're just running out of time, ah, is um, why, why do you think people today in our pandemic-based, you know, disorder here, why should we be interested in miracles? I, I think there are a number of, uh, I think that the, the evidence shows that when, a, when your mind or when your life is disorganized, upset, challenged, thrown into disarray, it often happens that, or, or threatened with actual uh, or even experiencing near death. It seems to be that it is in these uh, breakdown circumstances that the latent spiritual psychic uh, powers that human beings, I am certain, possess, and I'm certain only by inference from actual facts that we latently possess all of these ex extraordinary abilities. My sense is, my, my guess, maybe it's just a hope, but it's based on data that as we go more deeply into this uh, terrible crisis, I don't think it's going to get any better. I think it's going to get worse. There are many things yeah. involved, not just the the pandemic, yeah. and, but climate change, nuclear threats, uh, all kinds of violent disorders on the planet. As it gets worse, 
Yep. As it all gets worse, I think there will be just general uh, reactions, some right. of which will be profound. Yeah. And I have to stop you right there because we're out of time. This is Loretta Brown. My guest today, Dr. Michael Grosso, PhD, his book, Smile of the Universe, Miracles in an Age of Disbelief. You can find him at consciousnessunbound.blogspot.com. <laughs> and I think I'm going to summarize when we get to the point of breakdown, we are going to go through a breakthrough. Thank you so much, Dr. Grosso. It was a pleasure to have you. Blessings, everybody. Yep. My pleasure, too. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cool. All clear. Nice job. Oh, time. I'm so sorry I had to cut you off. We no, just, no, no. yeah. Thank right. you. From my heart to yours, thank you so much. We'll have